You probably think we've come down here to the banks of the Camcar River to admire this lovely stand of great willow herb, which is just about now at the peak of its flowering in early August. But no, what we've come to see before it disappears altogether from County Offaly is this handsome stately plant competing with the willow herb. This is Himalayan balsam. And Himalayan balsam arrived in the country sometime around the middle of the 19th century, around the same time as Japanese knotweed and giant hogweed. Now, alien plants form a surprisingly significant part of the Midlands flora, and alien plants have been arriving at different times for as far back as several thousand years. But usually, they settle in without drawing much attention to themselves. In the case of a few, however, uh, they can be seriously invasive and extremely disruptive of local ecology. And those three, Japanese knotweed, giant hogweed, and Himalayan balsam, certainly fit under that heading. Now, Himalayan balsam is an annual plant, so these plants die back every year, unlike the other two. Uh, but its prolific seed set means that it can become established wherever it finds conditions suitable to itself downstream. And a well-developed plant can produce as many as 2,400 seeds uh, in a single season. The large helmet-shaped flowers are magnificent. There is this very elaborate corolla of five fused petals, very elaborately zygomorphic. The stamens exceptionally complex in the roof above the entrance, where they are perfectly placed to brush against the large bumblebees, which are the flower's pollinators as they enter the flower. The stamens shed their pollen before the stigma becomes receptive. This is the only wildflower that can comfortably house a large bumblebee inside. How to describe the patterned kaleidoscope that greets it in there defies human words. Even to human eyes with the aid of a hand lens, the interior of the flowers is nothing short of dazzling, one of the most memorable floral sights I know. The bee needs to enter the flower to get at the nectar, which is produced in this green spur at the back, from which it oozes into the base of the helmet. In fact, no other wildflower produces so much nectar per individual flower. Apart from the flowers, the capsules are of considerable interest because they are explosive. Uh, scattering seeds as much as seven metres away, so that some of them will inevitably end up in the river, which will carry them downstream where they can become established wherever conditions suit the plant. And this is the problem, because if you have the plant established upstream, scattering its water-dispersed seeds into the river, which will carry them down, uh, it means that they can become established again and again in suitable locations further downstream, in spite of repeated attempts to eradicate them. Three years ago, uh, there were great swathes of Himalayan balsam at different places along the Kamkar and its tributaries, but a concerted and determined campaign by the Heritage Office of the County Council over the last three years has effectively eradicated the plant now from the Kamkar. Except for the odd individual or isolated small groups such as we have have here. So if you have the mixed good fortune to encounter Himalayan balsam on one of your walks, uh, take a long admiring look at these wonderful flowers before you have to eradicate them. Of course you could always eat them. All parts of the plant are edible, especially the flowers. Uh, the uh, capsules and the young shoots. Uh, and in fact, in the city of Wiesbaden in, in Germany, uh, on the north bank of the Rhine, where Himalayan balsam is a serious problem, uh, they make and sell jam made from the flowers in order to help to finance its eradication programme.